the second part of the interview with author Daya Gamage about his book. Tamil Tiger's Debt to America, U.S. Foreign Policy, Adventurism, and Sri Lanka's Dilemma. The author, Gamage, was a public affairs assistant and political specialist during 1970 to 1994 at U.S. diplomatic mission in Sri Lanka. He won a special award for his superior performance and professionalism in 1988 from the U.S. State Department. According to some credible information, USA had provided satellite intelligence in 2008 where Sri Lanka's Navy was able to sink seven Tiger ships loaded with military cargo in the international waters. So in other words, US had given substantial help to defeat LTT. Don't you agree? Which is true. In fact, in 2007, 2007, 2008, when there were seven ships uh, uh, brought, um, uh, were coming uh, with the LTT, all those arms, the, the U.S. intelligence, they gave all the information to the Sri Lankan government and the Navy sank those ships and that helped Sri Lanka. Uh, the, the only thing that the United States did was, um, um, was the air surveillance in the seas to prevent LTT getting arms. Now, Sri Lankan government, from the time Ju Ju August 2006, when they started this war, Elam War 4, up to the end of the um, war in 2009, May, United States never gave any um, military aid because under the, uh, under the Leahy uh, Amendment in the US Congress, United States identified Sri Lanka as a human rights violator. You see, as a result of that, uh, because of that, under the Leahy Agreement, Leahy uh, Amendment in the in, um, in the in the uh, in the U.S. Congress, they did not provide any uh, military aid to Sri Lanka. Even in 1987. 87, when the Vadamaraji offensive was going on during the Jair Javadana's United National Party regi regime, uh, 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 National Security Minister Lalit Atulatmadili was in full blast of the United States with, in the, in the uh, uh, National Security Council chaired by Jair Javadana. It is mentioned in my book that United States did not give military aid. Because they consider that a that the, that a fighting the LTT is almost fighting the Tamil people. That is that was in their mind. Uh, Daya, uh, talk briefly about your views on the post-war diplomatic strategy of USA and how did that impact Sri Lanka? It has impacted a lot. Now, now the thing is, for the 26 years that the LTT had been running this war of uh, military adventurism, there were Tamil diaspora elements who supported this and sustained the LTT for 26 years. They collected funds. They collected military, military equipment. They had propaganda, um, um, uh, public diplomacy uh, efforts to sustain that LTTE. And in fact, there are people in the United States who are citizens in the United States who had been counseling Velupille uh, um, Prabhakaran. They, they attended those uh, uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the meetings between the government of Sri Lanka and the LTT. Now, when the LTT was defeated in 2009 May, the, 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 the whole thing shifted globally to the Tamil diaspora. Because actually, here is a situation where LTT was militarily trying to divide the nation. And when it was domestically defeated, the diaspora overtook to diplomatically uh, um, uh, uh, divide the nation. That is what was happening here. Now, I, I won't say that the United States supported the division of the country, but the fact remains that the Sri Lanka, uh, that, the, uh, that the Tamil diaspora operatives became very close to the uh, to the to the Western nations, to the Western policy um, uh, blocks. Now, as a result of that, there were more than reconciliation. They were going on on uh, civilian deaths, war crimes, and even genocide. 
That is how Sri Lanka was pushed to Geneva, to the United Nations Human Rights Commission. That is what is happening right now. And now, you don't see any responsibility in the part of Sri Lankan leaders in the post-war period that galvanized international condemnation? You see, what happened was during the Rajapaksa uh, uh, administration, after the, after the LTT's defeat, they went on a nationwide triumphalism. I mean, they had they had uh, rallies all over Sri Lanka, mostly in the south, and the and the ninety percent, ninety five percent of people who rallied round in in triumphalism were Sinhalese people. Now, the, what Rajapaksa regime should have done was to embrace the Tamil people who are under the despotic rule under Prabhakaran. They should have embraced those people. Now, without embracing, you went on triumphalism. What the Tamil people, the, the message that the Tamil people got was, did we get defeated? Now, that is what the Tamil diaspora operatives globally picked up and became the voice of the 11% Tamil people and the State Department and the uh, Western powers, policy operatives, they are Western legislators, accepted that the operatives within the Tamil diaspora who were once sustained in the LTT were the, uh, were the spokesperson for this 11% Tamils. Now, that is the influence that, the, the influence that made the, uh, Sri Lanka to be pushed to Geneva. Now, here is the, you know, after the Sirisena Vikram Singh regime came in uh, February 2015, the U.S. influence increased. And as a result of that, the, uh, the Sirisena Vikram Singh administration was somewhat dependent on the on on uh, on, uh, on Western powers, so they couldn't really uh, ignore some of the things that the reconciliation and the and the accountability, especially accountability, human rights violation. They couldn't. Uh, that is why the Sri Lanka government and the uh, and the and the United States jointly signed that. Uh, uh, the resolution and Geneva in 2015 September. According to the resolution, you are going for war crimes. That is what is, what is the status of Sri Lanka today. US has been a long time friend of Sri Lanka. So you argue that US has done more harm than help to Sri Lanka? In fact, this is, this is what, I, what, what I can very clearly say. United States never wanted Sri Lanka divided. They opposed LTT's terrorism. That is one that is one thing that I learned when I was working with the US State Department and the American Embassy in Colombo. But but the fact remains that they thought that the LTT resembled uh, the, the Tamil grievances. That was one. And when the LTT was defeated, that the, the, they, they created a conducive atmosphere globally for the Tamil diaspora operatives to conduct affairs there, like what the LTT did. You see, so this is this is what what really happened there. Now I won't I won't I won't say that the the, the, the State Department or the Washington was helping the Tamil diaspora to divide the country. No, this is going to be a collateral damage, really. What really happened in Laos, uh, in, uh, in Cambodia? You see, in 1989, 19, uh, 1969, 68, 69, 70, 72, when the carpet bombing under the Dixon administration started to prevent the North Vietnamese troops coming to, uh, to capture South Vietnam, there was a um, political, uh, insignificant political activist who went around the country and said that this, this is what the United States is doing. And finally, after three years later, he became the head of the country, Pol Pot. That is collateral damage. Now, what I say is that intentionally or unintentionally, United States uh, attitude uh, um, uh, since the war ended in 2009 in creating a conducive atmosphere for the Tamil diaspora operatives to, to, uh, to influence Western countries have had a greater impact on Sri Lanka, which has damaged Sri Lanka. Today, today the, the steps are going like this, to uh, delegitimize the Sri Lankan state, saying that there is human rights violations there. 
then you the tamil diaspora operatives wanted the united nations in now united nations is already in because sri lanka is sent to geneva now next step will be to united nations to have a referendum in the north and east to have a greater uh, the greater devolution of power and god knows that sometimes beyond that it will be a separate state now this is the conducive atmosphere that the that the washington has created it's a very difficult and somewhat controversial subject that you have dealt in this book what motivated you to write this book really what motivated is i found that about 18 to 20 books and scholarly papers written by very erudite professionals and academics with well research analysis lacked a pivotal aspect one aspect was lacking washington's playbook on sri lanka's minority issues the battle to rest the tamil tigers war crimes ethnic reconciliation and accountability for uh, accountability now in this book tamil tigers dead to america that's why i named it tamil tigers dead to america us foreign policy adventurism this book i disclose that vital link washington's foreign policy approaches decisions and actions since the defeat of the ltt in may 2009 to the developed perspective during the 1980s and 90s which i had up close and personal knowledge and their significance this book is someone somewhat a unique book really because this is a insider's uh, account that i have written so the that lack of understanding by many erudite personnel who wrote about 18 to 20 books and scholarly papers i have filled the gap that what happened in tuta for instance i will um, mention one thing in 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 may 6 2009 in washington state department uh, media event one of the officials in the state department said that they, they are trying to see that you know that there are such ceasefire uh ceasefire uh, in in sri lanka then he said that you know that uh, why did the ltt have a um, uh, backing all these years because of the tamil grievances then he comes to the next point and he says we are wondering what to do with the leadership of the ltt here is a washington state department official is talking about the leadership of a organization which is already designated a terrorist organization by the us federal government in 1997 now lot of people couldn't mis interpret that now why did they tell that you no know, what are we going to we are wondering what to do with the leadership of the ltt that means what you are wondering what to do with prabhakar now they don't need to tell those things unless their mindset has been conditioned and been developed that the that this whole war in sri lanka was in favor of the tamil people's grievances that concludes our news edition we meet you again with another news edition of news views and entertainment from boston and usa till then goodbye